All right. So let's get started. Data visualization. So a quick introduction about me, as you all are here, uh, we'll be recording sessions and post. Yes, yes. So the second sessions I already started recording. So this session, uh, let me see. Let me see that. Yeah, the recording is already on, and I'll upload it on YouTube, and I'll share the link. I'll share the link via email. Recordings will be uploaded maybe by um, tomorrow end, and I'll share the link through email. Additionally, you can join the community Telegram community which I created, and there also I keep on posting these uh, videos and recording sessions. Okay, I hope you guys are having access to <clears throat> that community. Just give me a second. <clears throat> I'll grab that link so that you can join the community if you are not the part of community yet. Yes, the community link is in the <clears throat> group uh, in the chat. You can copy this link. And if you are not able to do it from your laptop or PC, you can just uh, try this from your mobile phones. So copy this somewhere in your notepad or else uh, once the meeting is over, you will not be able to get the link. Okay, so let's get started with the session. All right, so quick introduction about me. I just, I know most of you are not new. You already know about me, uh, but a quick rundown. Okay, so uh, myself, Yogesh Butre. I am uh, ASQ certified Six Sigma black belt uh, in this training and coaching industry from last three years, from 2019 onwards. Uh, the moment I get my certificate, I quit my job. And now into training and uh, coaching industry, along with some other businesses that I do. So this is what I uh, normally do on Saturdays and Sundays. I keep sharing my knowledge and uh, I help people achieve their career growth by solving problems in their work work uh, or in their you know companies. And uh, this is what I believe. This is what I strongly believe: continuous learning and implementation is the key to growth. So if really if you really want to grow, this is what you need to do: learn. Not only learn but implement. Okay, and we'll talk about this in detail when we go to the last part of the session. But this is what I strongly believe and this is what I strongly follow to grow myself. Now, <clears throat> today's content, what we are going to cover today. So today we are going to talk about uh, two things. First is data visualization. And there are various graphical tools that we are going to see today, including histogram, box plots, scatter diagrams, matrix scatter diagrams, 3ds plots, dot plots, individual value plots, marginal plots, and normal probability plots or, or probability plots. So uh, yes, it is going to be a lot of uh, uh, useful content for you, all of you. And we are going to see some practical examples and we are going to do it in Excel and Minitab as well. Few tools we are not able to do it in Excel because uh, we need to you know, calculate some statistical values for that. So for that purpose, we go to Minitab, but I'll tell you how to use few tools in the Excel as well, which is relatively easy. And then we'll talk about career growth. If you really want to achieve career growth, if you are struggling to get it, and if you are really looking for some change around you and in your life, how do you uh, do that? And we'll talk about that in uh, part two. So let's get started with main content, main topic, data visualization. So, so let me ask you this question. Before we start with the tool, <clears throat> we should understand the meaning of data. The meaning of data. So, so let me ask you this question. When we say data, what do you understand by data? What is the meaning of data? Yes, anyone, you can just unmute yourself and you can speak or you can even type in the chat. Yes, what do we mean by data? 
voice of the process okay voice of the process uh, too technical term but yes voice of the process is the data what else putting it in a simple word what does mean by data observations great observation is a data collection of facts measurable information which will help for uh, to take the action measurable information great Action statistics collected together for reference. Statistics collected for reference, collected for getting some information in, inside. Yes, right. But can we say it is always a, a, a numeric? Does data always a numeric or, or values? Yes or no? We, we normally in our day to day life, uh, maybe it's our professional life, maybe it's our personal life, we always deal with data. It may be uh, numerical, it may not be numerical, but it is a data, it gives us some information about that content, or about that about that uh, thing that someone is talking about. So anything which is giving us some information is nothing but a data, it may be numerical, it may not be numerical. Okay, so, so uh, definition of data is a numerical expression of any activity. Okay, numerical expression of any activity. But when, when I say numerical, it is not only numbers. It is uh, it is categories as well. For example, when I say I have blue color car, it is a data. Okay, when I say I have a car, it is also a type of data. I have car, I don't have car. I have blue color car, I have red color car. I have 10 cars, I have two cars, or or my weight is 80 kg, or my age is uh, 30, 30 years. So these are all expressions of some activities or expression of some uh, statements in terms of numerics or in terms of categories okay and understanding type of data is the most important aspect whenever we talk about data analysis or whenever we talk about getting some insights into process we must first understand the type of data and based on that we basically have to select whether it is a graphical tool or whether it is a statistical tool or whether it is uh, just uh, taking out some uh, you know means medians and standard deviations from the data and getting some valuable information from that data we must understand the type of data first and to get the data we must be able to measure and there are two uh, two gurus two quality gurus lord kelvin we all know lord kelvin who invented kelvin scale and along with that there are a lot of inventions that he does he does and kaurav ishikawa ishikawa uh, known as ishikawa diagram fishbone diagram so a great inventor and great guru quality guru so both are talking about data in, in different ways. And uh, these are the statements. These are not statements. These are the quotes that are said by them. This says that if you are not able to express numbers, if you are not able to express phenomena in numbers, you do not know about it adequately. Okay. So when I say I have a blue color of car, yes, it is a type of data, but it is not that much useful information. If you put it in terms of numbers, if you have some data and if you put it, when I say I'm overweight, what do you mean by overweight? And when I say I'm 90 kg, that means I know something more about it. That information is now more helpful. Overweight, you cannot you know, get that clarity that what do you mean by overweight? How much? What is the goal? Or what is the standard weight? And how much is your weight? So you need to put it in terms of numbers. If you are able to do that, then you know better about the process by Lord Kelvin. And Ishigawa says that conclusions based on facts and data are necessary for improvement. Necessary for improvement. If you do not take action based on, or if you do not take decisions based on facts and data, and if you keep on taking random decisions based on your gut feeling, based on your opinions or experiences, what will happen is that particular decision will not give you better results or, or not give you result at all. That, or if you are working on some problem solving, and if you take decision based on uh, gut feeling experience without looking at fact and data, what will happen is that problem will reoccur and it keep on reoccurring unless and until you look into data and take decision appropriately. So that is why understanding data and taking decisions based on facts and data is the important aspect of, of, you know, of everyone's life, no matter it is professional life or personal life. We have to think from data perspective. We think from heart in relationship that, you know, that opinion thought works in relationships 
don't think from data perspective i am living with you for 5 years now you cannot leave me that doesn't work in relationship but in real life when we deal with the problems of processes or services we need to think from data that in that uh, in that scenario we cannot think from what think, think from data think from mind is what is uh, emphasized here so uh, broadly speaking there are two categories of data uh, two broad categories so any type of data you will be able to fit into one of these category okay qualitative and quantitative so so easy to remember when we say quantitative it is basically representing some quantity it represents some quantity quantity means some number some values and when we say qualitative it represents some quality of data some characteristics of data some features some categories of data that is qualitative okay let me charge my laptop okay qualitative and quantitative two broad categories so so think about any any data you will be able to put it in one of this category so when i say i have blue color of car is it qualitative or quantitative yes qualitative qualitative it is it is not a numerical data it is not a quantity okay it is it's talking about some attribute some category some characteristics and and when i say my car has a mileage of 20 km per liter what type of data is it quantitative quantitative right it is some quantity when i say 20 km per liter is my mileage it is talking about some quantity some numerical value so quantity so think about any data any data that is coming in your mind you can put it in one of this category and then there are segments then there are sub categories to each of this data uh, data category or data criteria now let's talk about that as well so quantitative broadly speaking there are two categories one is discrete and the second is continuous discrete and continuous okay so so uh, let's talk about discrete first okay so so tell me what do you understand by discrete data any thoughts let let me put two numbers here uh, let me put two numbers here yeah this is the one number my car mileage is 20 km per liter and i have two cars so which one is continuous and which one is discrete are are both continuous or both discrete two car continuous and other another one is discrete okay this one you are saying continuous yes this is one you are saying discrete yes any yeah. other thought is what what differentiates continuous and discrete uh, type or category? discrete is countable and uh, continuous is measurable perfect countable and measurable so which one is countable between these two two cars two cars we can count and 20 km per level is measurable quantity measurable characteristics okay and and countable measurable uh, sometimes creates confusion is it count or is it measure measure quantity that that creates confusion not very easy to understand so to make it very clear and to make it data remember forever in, yeah go ahead data in if data is in fraction like uh, uh height weight it's continuous ha ah, great other one is discrete that's major difference yes perfect that is the difference so that is the key differentiation and that is easy to remember and to put it in more simple words if we have certain data and if you are able to break it down into its sub sub components or if you are able to break it down into digits or decimals then that is continuous data and if you are not able to break it down or broke it down in in digits then it is a continuous it is a discrete data for example when i say i have two car i can only have two car or three car or i can have one car if if i say i have 2.5 car does this make sense no of course not how can someone have 2.5 cars or how can how can someone have three defects uh, 3.5 defects or 3.2 defects it is it doesn't make any sense normally so if that you know that broke down of data if doesn't make any sense that means that data is not continuous that is a discrete data count data basically and if you can broke it down into its sub components uh, decimal places then that is continuous data for example Uh, if i say my car mileage is 20.5 km per liter does this make sense
Yes, does this make sense? 20.5 kilometer per liter. Or, or when I say my height is, let's say 180 centimeters. And, and when I say my height is 179.8 centimeters. Or when I say my height is 179.78 centimeters. Does these values make sense? Yes. Of course, yes, yes. right? Yes. It is based on what scale you are using. The, the more precise the scale is, you will be able to get that precise values. It is depending on your measurement scale that you are using, but you can able to break it down into its decimal places. And that also makes sense. So that is basically a dis uh, differentiation between discrete and continuous. Okay, as simple as that. Uh, right, so let me quickly clear all this stuff here. Okay. So discrete data, whole numbers that cannot be broken down is discrete and the numbers that can be broken down such as height, weight, or any other variable like temperature, time, these are all continuous data. Okay. And then we'll talk about qualitative and these are again having two subcategories, two broad subcategories. The one is nominal and the second is ordinal. Now, now let me give you some example here and then we'll discuss about that nominal and ordinal. So let's say I have two cars. One car is having blue color. And the second car is having red color. Okay. And let's say I have uh, same two cars and I'm giving it a rating. I'm saying one car is good and another car is bad on, on a relative scale. I'm not specifying good on uh, what scale or on bad on what scale. I'm saying one car is good, one car is bad. Maybe based on mileage, maybe based on visual attributes, whatever it is, but one car is good, one car is bad. So what type of data is it? Good, bad is ordinal. Ordinal, okay. While the color uh, is a nominal data. Nominal data, okay. So what differentiates ordinal and nominal? Uh, in nominal data, we have two colors, but we cannot uh, you know, give them ranking or we cannot uh, derive associated decision. Hmm. If there is a red card, there is a blue card, but there is no prerequisite related to it. So we cannot uh, you know, keep it in a sequence. So that is nominal data. When I say it is good and bad, we say uh, we know that there is something uh, which is differentiating between this good and bad. So it is ordinal, but yet we don't know how good or how bad it is. So right. for me, good and bad, which you know, uh, makes a difference of one scratch, I'll say it is bad. For another person who don't have a car, for him having a car at least is a good thing. Even it is working you know, once in a week, even he will tell it is good. So mm -hmm. person to person or system to system, the definition of good and bad will change. Right. Any other thought? Anyone else? <coughs> okay. So whatever Hardik you said, it's perfectly right. When I say I have two cars, one car is having blue color and the another car is having red color that basically talks about some names, right? Name categories colors, tones, genders, different groups, different supplier, supplier A, supplier B, or, or uh, different locations, south, north, east. These are, these are names. These are naming variables. So this is called as nominal data. Name, norm stands for name. Okay, easy to remember. Norm stands for name, name data. And anything which is having order is ordinal data. Or, or D, stands for order, order data. So you'll be able to create or stack it in terms of some order. Good is better or good is good, bad is bad. You have that ranking, you have that order here. No one prefers bad, everyone prefers good. But when I say black and red, someone prefers black, someone prefers red. There is no order. 
you cannot stack it in terms of higher and lower order <clears throat> so anything that is having some kind of orders or sequence is called as ordinal data for example one for happy two for neutral and three for nf now this always doesn't mean that ordinal data is numerical or or when i say uh, customer satisfaction or when i say or or uh, all of us are aware about amazon and the scale that amazon uses is 1 to 5 okay, ratings for products or reviews of products but when we say 1 to 5 this is not a discrete data right and and when i say 1 to 5 this is also not a continuous data ratings can be 1.2 ratings can be 1.4 ratings can be 4.8 but still this is not a continuous data this is a rating this is this is having some order five is perfect and one is worst it is having that order so if i convert these two numbers let's say five is bad uh, sorry one is bad and five is good so now this doesn't mean that i am converting my continuous data on a scale of ordinal data this doesn't mean that because it is a order data it is having that scale lower to higher you can stack it from lower to higher or uh, you can sort this data so that is called as ordinal data and it can be in form in terms of numbers it can be in terms of text happy unhappy satisfied not satisfied good bad clear rating on a scale of 1 to 5 1 to 10 this is all ordinal data and you must understand these types of data so that Accordingly, you can select any tool, any whether it is a graphical tool, whether it is a statistical tool, or whether it is just calculating some statistics like mean, median, mode, and standard deviation, and all the stuff. Based on that, you have to take decisions. So, understanding data type is the most important thing before going to even data analysis, real data analysis. Is this clear to all of you? Just type in chat. Just say yes or no in the chat. Let me know. Yes, neutral. So, <laughs> so one more type of data that we are getting from this participation from your side, neutral participation. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that. <clears throat> but when I say uh, uh, you are giving me response, yes, no, and there is third category, neutral. Neither yes, uh, either not not yes or not no, not both neither of the uh, one so that is again ordinal data right giving response yes neutral and no so so let's talk about this discrete and continuous data once again discrete is any data that is just a whole number and that you will not be able to <clears throat> broke it down into its subcategories and the example that was given was i have two cars and other examples are like when you count defect in your product you can have five defective product, 10 defective product, or 100 defective product out of 1000 or out of 10,000. So that is discrete data. Defective products cannot be 2.5. It can be either one defect or two defect. It cannot be 1.2 defect. You cannot broke it down. So that is a discrete data. And continuous is anything that you will be able to broke down into subcategories or into its sub components. For example, height. Height can be 178. It can be 178.5. Weight can be 70 kg. Weight can be 70.5 kg. Weight can be 70.25 kg or 70.25 or 250 kg. It is depending on the scale that you are using. If you are using that uh, classical analog scale, you will just be able to see either 70 or 71. If you use a digital scale, you will be able to see 70.2, 70.3. And if you go to a jewelry shop, you will be able to see 70.0001. That is the scale that they are using. But basically, that values also make sense. You can broke it down into decimal places that is continuous clear <clears throat> are they the same as variable attribute ha, yes continuous data is we call it as a variable data and discrete data is what we call it as a attribute data yes they are same this is variable this is attribute <coughs> right 
right and and some of the textbooks talks about this as well this this in fact some of the time known as attribute data also so that attribute variable basically creates some confusion okay So now let's get started with the actual tools, actual graphical tools. And the very first tool in our uh, tool pack is histogram. Right, uh, a very old age tool, a very old age graph that we always study from school times, but no one knows what is the practical application of that histogram when we learn it in school times. But it is having very good real practical application if you know how to interpret the histogram. Histogram is a chart that plots distribution of numerical variables or values as a series of bars so it basically has two axes uh, x-axis is what we, we call this as and this is what we call it as a y-axis <clears throat> okay xy axis x-axis is your data type <clears throat> is your data variable and y-axis is frequency frequency uh, we can also call it as a count count how many times it has appeared for example, if we look into this, this is one, this is two, three, four, and five. Okay, so if I if I look into this, this is a response time in hours. Response time in hours. So from zero to one hour, we have how much? Maybe 30 or 35 incidences. Or 35 frequencies or 35 counts. Or, or here it is ticket. So from a range of zero to one, we have 35 tickets. Or, or for 35 tickets, the response time is from a range of, or in a range of zero to one hour. And if we go on to this peak here, it is talking about this, this time, which is maybe from two to three. And if we stretch this here, let's consider this as 175. So I can say from looking at this histogram, I can say that from two to three hours, there are 175 tickets or 175 tickets took response time between two to three hours. It is as simple as that. And, and then there are different meanings associated with each of the histogram. We'll talk about that as well, but this is what it is. Uh, a variable, your characteristics on X axis and frequency or count on Y axis. And then there are <clears throat> multiple other statistics like how many number of bins are there, even how to find out number of bins, how to plot a histogram. Uh, and we'll, we'll take one practical example for that. <clears throat> okay, so let's take one example here for histogram. So <clears throat> how many of you are having Minitab installed with you? Just type in chat if you are having it, yes or no. Don't don't be neutral here. What does what does it mean by neutral here? Yes or no? Okay, most of you are having mini apps. Okay, some of the people are still neutral. So let's take some examples. Uh, so we'll take example in minute app and of course in excel as well and i have this file so uh, i'll share this data with all of you so you don't have to worry about it i'll share this in telegram community and i'll share this through email as well so let's take one example for this <coughs> histogram and we have here a value of torques and machines categories so to create histogram in Excel, it is also not that difficult. You just have to follow some steps. And so what happened is Zoom control is not giving me access to that tab. Okay. So go to insert. So go to insert and there is a histogram available under this option. Histogram is directly available. So just click on that. It will create a histogram. Okay. And, and it is basically 
clubbing these two categories. So we just have to select create it for torque torque values. Okay, this is these are torque values, and uh, <clears throat> if you look into it now, and if I add data labels here, this is count now. So I can say that from ten to fifteen point five, or or there are thirteen readings which are from range of ten to fifteen point five, thirteen readings out of these, out of these sixty nine or sixty eight readings. There are thirteen readings which are from range of ten to fifteen point five. There are twenty nine readings which are in the range of fifteen point five to twenty one, and this is what we call it as a bin. This is what we call it as a bin in in terms of histogram language. These are bins. So this is bin one, this is bin two, this is bin three, bin four, and bin five. Okay, so uh, this Excel has created five different bins, and in each of the bin, it has a range. Fifteen point five to twenty one, twenty one to sixty, twenty six point five, and so on. And within each of that range, how many number of data points are there? So twenty nine data points, eleven data points, ten data points, and five data points. So what what are the different insights that we can take from this graph? <coughs> yes, what are the insights? That one can make. Yes. When so, if I ask you this question, uh, which torque values are most occurred? So, what will be the answer? Second bin has most reading, right? This bin, bin two, has most reading. So, I can say that out of that sixty-nine. Or 68 data points, 29 data points are within this range. So most of my torque values are within the range of 15.5 to 21. And there are only few. There are, in fact, only five data points which are in the range of 32 to 37.5. And this is on a scale from low to high. This is on a scale from low to high. This is always from low to high always. So you can take an uh, interpretation that where is your center of the distribution? How dispersed it is, or how far data points are from the center of the data, and how the distribution is, whether it is normal or skewed or or bimodal, multimodal. We'll we'll uh, see some graphs, okay? That will give you idea. But this is how histogram is plotted in Excel, right? And and frankly speaking, Excel is not that powerful or Uh, you know that is not so excel formulations is not that good to interpret about histogram because the way excel calculates number of bins is different there are formulas there are two three formulas to calculate number of bins number of bins means here we have five bins and the way excel calculates these bins is different so what will happen what will happen if i change this number of bins if you go here and if i say number of bins so now this is 5 so let let me copy this graph one more time and what will happen if we change the number of bins let's say from 5 to 8 what will happen what do you think it will the data will be spread categorically number of <coughs> bins will be more ha data spread badh jayega right data spread will get increased see now these two graphs are talking about same data same data we haven't changed anything in database but graphically visually it looks different visually it looks different and and it is it looks a way different than what we used to see in first graph if i change this to let's say let's say if i change this to less bins let's say three bins then now look at this this graph so all three graphs are of same data we haven't changed anything in data but we are getting different insights from the process of the same data which is actually very risky right one can interpret that this is a 
skewed distribution or this is also a skewed distribution and here we can say that it looks like a normal distribution <coughs> this looks like decreasing in trend decreasing in nature so we can say that there is a trend there are maximum data points are on the lower end only few data points are on the uh, higher end so there is a trend that data is following but that is not reality so what is reality what will be the proper bin size how do we identify that proper bin size so that is why excel for short and that is why we need to go to minute up the way minute up calculated bin is based on the data and based on the variation in the data it is not just based on the number of data points it is based on the variation or based on the dispersion of data so that is why i usually don't recommend using excel to get insights into your process at least when it comes to histogram so what so let's let's take this data into minute app and let's see what minute app shows us <coughs> what will be the bin size that minute app calculates and that is why minute app cost uh, lacks per year because of this this capability so if you go to minute app if i copy this data here so to create box plot or uh, so so to create histogram in minute app you have to follow these steps so go to stat uh, sorry go to graph histogram and let's go with simple first click on simple click okay and here you need to select the data graph variable and our graph variable is torque and just just click okay here don't change any settings just click okay okay and now let me copy this graph into excel we'll compare it side by side we'll see why it is not recommended okay this is what is produced by minute app Okay, now look at this graph all four are different none of them are same but same data okay so so which one is correct representation of your process out of these four graphs one is talking about yes it is normal not not so bad one is talking about it is little bit skewed minute app talks about it is too much skewed there are a lot of data points which are on the lower side only few on higher side and the spread is wider on the higher side there are few readings which are above 36 or 32 only few there are only uh, there are a less number of data points which are actually below 16 and this talks about a different story this is in fact more worse okay so so that is why it is important to calculate bin size based on based on correct formulas and basically if we change this bin size Uh, format axis minute app has calculated i think 12 bins okay we can count that in fact 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 bins oh minute app has calculated 15 bins here so go to format axis change this to 15 and now you will see the same graph see same graph in fact not same at all still still there are some data points which are not counted in correct way <clears throat> okay so that is why you should usually use excel or uh, not not excel you should usually use minute app for histogram and now let's look at the different types of histogram that we normally get okay so you might see one of this pattern in your histogram <clears throat> the very first is normal right when everything looks normal when your data follows normal distribution this is how histogram looks and we will we'll not talk about normal distribution here because that is a, a big topic on its own but normal distribution means the mean is exactly at the center and then you have equal distribution on both the sides equal distribution on both the side that is what normal is <clears throat> there is no any such pattern it is exactly symmetric if you 
draw a center line on normal distribution it is symmetric on both the end <clears throat> that is what normal is so you can see that uh, your data might be following normal distribution which is good you can also see that your data is following truncated distribution this is called as truncated normal so so tell me in which scenario we will see this kind of distribution let's say you receive <clears throat> some material from supplier you uh, check some characteristics let's say you check the weight of the material or weight of the part that you received from your supplier and then you create a histogram of that material that is received and it looks like this so what do you interpret from that data raw material variation mix up okay mix up so raw material variation what else what else this is called as truncated <clears throat> so if you look at this line here there is no any data point below this line let's say let's say this is your limits you have given your supplier that i don't want value below 10 and i don't want value about 20 okay now now think about it supplier running process at lower side which is within this pick and uh, saving it to cost can we say supplier is having within spec performance can we say supplier is having good performance compare this with this normal distribution compare this graph with this normal distribution it it should look like this if it is normal it should look like this okay so what supplier is doing is he is discarding this part at his end that means you have given him lower limit of 10 but his process is not adequate his process is doing very bad and he is having internal 100% inspection to verify whether it is within spec or not and whatever is below 10 he is just discarding at his end and he is sending you good parts only that is what the insights you can get from truncated type of uh, histogram right of course yes mean is shifted mean is shifted to lower side and mean shifted means there are some data points which are below lower spec and supplier is not giving you that material he may be sending that to someone else or he may be uh, modifying it he may be doing some rework and he sending it to you uh, uh, in a next uh, lot or new lot which is not good for your process so if any point of time if you are seeing something like this truncated normal distribution whether it is at your end or whether it is because of the supplier's quality it it 100% means that your process is not being good at all right now now let's talk about bi model we have two modes here so two modes or two picks means bi model and it can be multi modal there can be two modes there can be three four five six based on uh, the type of data or based on not type of data but based on the sources of data okay and when this happens is uh, so if you are having two different suppliers two different suppliers you are getting that material all together and you are measuring that dimensions and then you are creating histogram from two different suppliers or two different sources so in that case it is quite possible that you will see something like this two mode two model histogram or if we are having two different machines you are manufacturing parts from two different machines and then you are sending it all together to your vendors or to to your customers and you are measuring it all together so in that case you see something like bi model if those two are different if the means are two distributions are different then only you see bi model if the means are same then you will see normal then it will not differentiate but let's say this is 10 this is 20 so one source is having mean of uh, maybe 12 and another source is having mean of 18 so you are mixing two different sources together and that is why you are getting this bi model histogram so if you are getting this type of histogram from your supplier that also means that your supplier is mixing two sources which is of course not good he should identify different sources and he should investigate why there are different means and he must try to get the same mean for for both the processes or if it happens at your end you should also try to investigate that why there is a difference between mean of two processes why one is giving you 12 and why other is giving you 18 even if they are within spec 
why there is a difference we should investigate that and we try to shift all of them to center maybe in this case 15 we should try to shift 12 to 15 and 18 to 15 so that is second insight this is first insight in fact okay this is I consider this as a zero insight now look at uh, the third this is uniform this is called as uniform so there is no any pattern for all the bins uh, here maybe there are six seven bins in all the bins there are almost the same data points not exactly the same but it is not following that normal distribution trend so this does also happens in certain processes only but if you are having uh, if you are truly having normal distribution if everything is done in correct way then you will see most of the cases you will see normal distribution if you are seeing something like this that means you are basically not covering the wide range so maybe this data is from the range of 15 to 16 only okay and the actual data range is from 10 to 20 and you are just considering that that small patch of the process and within that patch there are all all the readings are same so the bin will be much more much more smaller here so 15.1 to 15.2 15.2 to 15.3 and so on so in that case you might see this kind of distribution and that is why converting your data into correct bin size is important with wrong bin size this is what you see uniform kind of distribution then we have moderate also uh, not moderate we have skewed also and skewed are there are two types of skewed one is left skewed and another is right skewed left skewed and right skewed <coughs> And then it is moderate or severe. Moderate or severe. Severe means the skew skew is much more higher. Moderate means it is little bit less, not that much severe. And when I say left skewed, it means there are few data points which are on extreme left end. And when I say right right skewed, there are few data points which are on extreme right end. Right, extreme right end. There are few data points. So data is pulled towards right side. Is right skewed data pulled towards left side is left skew okay that way you can remember it and if it is pulled too much that is severe skew and this kind of distribution will happen when you have you have certain limitations on data that means beyond certain values you will not get any value practically <clears throat> for example uh, if i say if i say uh, parallelity between two different surfaces how parallel are they so it can be zero zero means exactly parallel to each other and then it goes on changing zero to maybe 10 mm 20 mm or 50 mm so in that case there is a hard stop on zero you will never see value below zero in that case and so some one of them will have zero all are perfect some of them will have one mm some of them will have two mm three mm four mm and some of them might have 10 mm so if that is the case if you have a hard stop on your one of the limit in that case you might see something like severe data and that is normal to your process there is nothing wrong with skewed data if your process is normally producing this type of data but if you are not having that hard stop let's say uh, it can go below zero as well or or if we take example of weight if we take example of weight let's say this is 10 gram and 20 gram and in that case you are seeing this kind of severe skewed or right skewed graph that means there is something wrong with your process you should also get data below 10 for example 6 7 or 5 2 1 whatever it is you should get data below 10 as well in a normal operation if you are not getting that that means there is some kind of special cause associated with your process you must investigate it and take actions accordingly right that is about skewed data and then there are outliers as well outliers means uh, and it will be uh, given by a bin which are far away from your existing data points outliers means something is wrong with your data that particular data or that set of data points maybe typing error maybe uh, something worse has happened in your process maybe bearing has broken or maybe some new person has came onto that machine or something weird has happened something special cause basically and in that case you will see outliers in your histograms if one of the bin is far away from existing data points or all the other data points that means there is an outlier or or we can also say that there is some kind of special cause we must investigate why these data points are far away from all other data points and take actions accordingly <clears throat> okay so 
there are like how many 10 these are more eight insights from histogram and there are multiple insights more that you can get from histogram so a single tool you even don't have to look into uh, any other statistical value like what is mean median mode and what is standard deviation nothing just create a graph and you start talking about your process how your process is behaving is your supplier good or bad is your internal process good or bad do we have outliers do we have special causes is it stretch skewed very valuable information right yes have you found this helpful just type in yes in the chat let me know if you if you if you kind of relate this to your you know existing process or existing problems yes great so now there is a assignment for all of you and you don't have to share this assignment with anyone not with me as well you can of course share this assignment if you join uh, our telegram group telegram community you can of course share that assignment in the community <clears throat> what i want you to do is take any example take any data that you have access to and create a histogram and put it in a telegram community and and try to interpret it whether it is good or bad whether it is truncated by model okay just try to get insights into your own data can you do that you can share it if you want you can just keep it with yourself but try to do that implement the knowledge okay <clears throat> now let's talk about box plot the next graphical tool box plot now this is again very much helpful yet simple tool to use and you can of course get multiple more insights compared to histogram you will get additional benefits if you are using box plot so both of them are having their own pluses and minuses so let's talk about box plot box plot normally looks something like this and <laughs> you might be able to resemble this to one of the uh, one of the graph that we normally see in today's era because everyone is you know because of work from home and because of that market crash and ups and downs everyone aware about share market and one of the graph in share market is is candlestick which is very much similar to box plot yes have you seen this in in share market candlestick yes yes so it is similar to box plot but the way candlestick is plotted is little bit different <coughs> we will not talk about that because this is not a share market class but it talks about the same story almost the same story so let's talk about box plot it looks like this and it it may looks like this as well in some statistical software it may be horizontal okay and it, it may be horizontal it may be vertical but the meaning remains the same the interpretation remains the same it doesn't change so what will happen is in iqr uh, in uh, not in iqr in box plot we have to sort our data sort our data from low to high as like histogram histogram we also sort the data from low to high on x axis but here we are doing it on y axis or you can do it on x axis as well it depends whether you are using vertical or horizontal but basically we have to sort the data and then we have to split our data into four parts four equal size groups splitting the data into four equal size category four groups so basically we need to find out center first center of the data so this means i have 50% of the data on lower side and 50% of the data on upper side so i am splitting my entire data once i sort i am splitting it into two parts and then again i can split it into two more parts and i can split it here and i can split it here so this means each of this part here or each of this area here represents 25% of the data right so 25 25 25 25 accumulates 100% of the data and this is how box plot is created as simple as that so in box plot this is what we call it as a center and when we talk about center of the data this is nothing but a median median right a statistical term different than mean median means center of your data when you sort it from lower to higher or higher to lower exact center of the data and then <clears throat> this is also called as 50th percentile or median and half of the observations are above that half of the observations are below that then above line a line which is next to that 50th percentile is called as 75th percentile and this is also called as quartile 3 q3 and we can say that up to this up to this line we have 75% data points 
right? 75%. This 25, this 25, and this 25. 75% data points are up to this value. Then there is 25th percentile, 25th. That means we have 25% data points up to this line or up to this value. Let's let's put some value. Let's say this is 10. Let's say this is 20, 30, 40, and let's say this is 50. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so when I say 25th percentile, that means from range of 10 to 20, I have 25% data points. Okay, from range of 20 to 30. In, in the range of 20 to 30, I have another 25%. From in the range of 30 to 40, I have another 25. And from 40 to 50, I have another 25%. Okay, and this, this line, which is at upper end, this is called as upper whiskers length, or this is also called as upper whisker. And then there is a length associated with that. So if you look at this graph closely, this length is less, and this length is more, higher length. Okay, and that length defines by this formula, quartile three plus 1.5 multiplied by interquartile range. And interquartile range is nothing but this area, the middle 50% portion. So in this case, 40 minus 20, or, or this range is basically 20 here, right? 40 minus 20 or 20. <clears throat> that means my interquartile range is 20. So to find out that whisker length, I have to multiply that by 1.5 and add that to quartile three, which is 40 here, right? So it will become how much? 30 plus 40. So it will become 70, right? Of course it is not 70 here, but this is how it is calculated. Quartile three plus 1.5 multiplied by your interquartile range or, or there is another way, maximum value minus quartile three, whichever is lower is your upper viscous length, whichever is lower between these two formulas. <clears throat> and then there is no whisker as well calculated in similar way but here we are subtracting it from q1 1.5 multiplied by iqr and we subtract that from q1 or q1 minus minimum value whichever is lower is going to be lower whisker <clears throat> and then there are some data points which are not following within this range which are not following within this whisker length those are called as outliers those are represented by dot in some statistical software and in some statistical software, these are represented by star or cross. And these are called as outliers. Outliers means these are far away from your all other data points, maybe some kind of special cause. <coughs> okay. This is how box plot is plotted or this is how box plot is created. Now let's take some example for box plot that will make you understand it in a more better way. Okay, so let me copy this data for box plot quickly from that Excel file. Okay, so we have uh, data, different type of data here. So of course we have this nominal data, blend one, blend two, blend three. We have some continuous data of hardness. We have some continuous data of temperature. And we have some nominal data of operators or, or we can say this is qualitative uh, quantitative and this is qualitative okay broadly speaking or we can also say this is variable and this is attribute that also can be said so to create a box plot we have to go to graph and box plot graph menu and box plot and there are four options available one is with y one y one is with single y or when when i say y that means your output, how many outcomes you have, single Y or multiple Y. And do we have groups with, it, with groups or without groups is what we have. So let's go with simple first. We'll talk about simple first. <clears throat> Click OK. Here you need to select the graph variable. So let's select hardness first. Okay, let's talk about hardness and click OK. You will get this box plot. <coughs> and now let's interpret this. This is upper whisker. This is quartile two. This is quartile three. This is quartile two. This is quartile one. And this is lower whisker. Okay. And, and now pay attention to this closely. As we all know that 50% of the data point is below this median line and 50% of the data points are above this median line. But what we are seeing here is this 
has higher length sorry this has lower length or lower spread and this has higher spread so what is meaning of that what is the meaning of that shift to lower side process shift to lower side lower side or higher side this is low and this is high data is not normal okay maybe that that may be the case data is not normal because it is not exactly at center what else more variation towards a lower limit perfect higher variation towards lower limit so so i know this is my 25% this is my 25% this is my another 25 and this is my last 25% so which range is having higher variation let let me put some values here okay if you just hover your mouse over this box plot you will get this values okay the values is 10 point so let's consider 10 14 and 16 okay 10 14 16 i'll just write this value here this is 10 this is 14 and this is 16 so this 14 and 16 is my 25% data this 10 and 14 is also my 40 25% data but if you look at the at the range it is how much 2 and this is 4 so that means there is higher variation on second quartile higher variation on second quartile this is having higher variation the variation is varying from 10 to 14 in fact even if it is only 25% data same 25% data but the variation is larger and in fact the variation is too much larger on first 25% segment so for some reason if i consider this as maybe 6 so from 6 to 10 even if it is only 25% data let's say i have 100 data points out of 100 25 data points are in a range of 6 to 10 okay so huge variation on on first half and in second half there is a uh, there is a very small and the smallest variation is in this range 14 to 16 or i can say q3 to q2 that means data is not exactly at center there is some variation and variation is basically on the lower side higher variation is on the lower side <coughs> right if you are seeing box plot something like this exactly at center and all are same that means this is kind of a perfect normal distribution and here you are seeing something like this maybe skewed <coughs> right skewed right skewed so now let's make it more better what we need to do is go to graph histogram uh, sorry box plot and now select option with group and this is the power of minitab you can create box plot with different group multiple group multiple sources so let's say i have a data of hardness and i want to see the impact of hardness on different by different operators let's say i want to see the uh, different operators how they are measuring hardness or is there any relationship between operators and hardness so you can click graph variable and categorical variable is operator and then click okay <coughs> excuse me so now look at this box plot so what what will be the interpretation from this box plot now yes which operator is good hardness higher is better which operator is good mean is not same across operators perfect so which operator is having higher mean operator 1 right operator 2 is having lowest mean this is not a mean let's consider 
<coughs> this is the median. So operator two has lowest median. Operator three has in between these both two. So I can make a conclusion that if hardness higher is better, that means operator one is good. It is giving me higher higher hardness for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I need to verify that, or I need to find out why operator one is doing good. Operator two is worse. Higher variation is also higher, and it is also shifted towards lower side. And if we consider the variation part, operator three is good. Right? If you look at the spread of this data, this is lowest. This is variation is lowest. So I can make conclusion that operator three is having minimum variation out of these uh, three operators. Operator three is good as far as variation is concerned. <coughs> right. So if I am okay with fifteen, I might choose operator three because he is having lower variation compared to operator one also. Right. So very valuable and very useful information just by creating a box plot. Yes. Any questions in box plot? We can, in fact, add multiple variables here, multiple categorical variables. Okay. You can add operator, and let's say I want to add paint as well. Okay. So now this graph is operator and paint both combination of both on on categorical variable. So within operator one, this is a Distribution with respect to four blends, and this is operator two four blends and operator three four blends. <coughs> right, so I am getting four multiplied by three. I am getting twelve box plots here, but of course for some of the box plot it is just a straight line. So what do you think? Why I am getting this straight line here? Just a center line. Why? Yes. Any thought? Maybe data points are uh, limited. Perfect. Limited means only one data point. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Look at this. N is equal to one. So you have single data point. Then basically that box plot doesn't make any sense. We need to have at least twenty <clears throat> data points for box plot to make sense for each of the category. So of course you can get some information from this data, but it is not that much useful because data point is not adequate. Sample size is not adequate, but still we can say that. So now, if I want to choose a blend and operator, and if I say higher is better, so which one is my choice? Yes, hardness higher is better. Which one is my choice? Which blend and which operator? Operator one, blend four. Perfect. This one will be my choice. Operator one, blend four. And if I say hardness, I need lower or better, then operator two, blend two. <coughs> right? This graph is having lowest mean, or or we can say lowest median, maybe three or four. so that is how we interpret box plots and we can create it for multiple categories multiple continuous variables and categories all together and you can keep on exploring this okay and the possibilities are endless it is up to you how you want to create it and what is your objective basically what you want to find out based on that you select variables maybe it is a continuous variable or categorical variable and create a box plot and try to get information about your process make sense Yes. Any doubts in box plot? <coughs> There is one more example. I'll I'll just share the Excel file. You can play around that data. Okay, you can create your own box plots and just let me know in the community. Right? Any doubt in box plot? <coughs> so let's go to next topic. Next tool, dot plot. now this may not be that much valuable may not be that much useful but this can be used when you have less data points 
in less data points histogram or box plot doesn't make any real sense so and that sample size is basically 50 if you have data points which are less than 50 you can in fact create a dot plot as well and what dot plot create what dot plot uh, plots is uh, it is not a bin it is an individual value <coughs> okay all the values will be taken by the by that dot plot and it will count how many times it appears and on a scale up lower to higher and it just plots a dot and this is what you need to count one two three four five six seven and eight so i can say that 15 has occurred eight times 16 has occurred maybe six times and 17 has also occurred eight times this is how dot plot is created <coughs> 36 occurred only one time right 37 occurred only one time so again uh, you'll be able to see keep where the center is your process where the center is is it having two different modes or is it very much spread is it widespread or is it variation is small or large that you can interpret by looking at dot plot as well okay so now let's see how to create it in minidap and for that purpose we have to use the same example <coughs> torque values so go to graph and dot plot and here so we'll now go with group with group we have two machines so two groups and you can in graph variable you can select torque in categorical variable you can select machine and just click ok okay so you are getting two dot plots for two different machines based on the torque values so so tell me which one is having lower variation out of these two machines this first is machine one okay machine one and this is machine two which one is having higher variation or which one is having higher torque value machine one or two yes Bolo yaar, type karo chart mein. Just let me know. Be participative. Which one is having higher torque? Machine one or two? Machine two, right? So maybe this is what center is, or this is where the mean is, and this is where maybe this or this is where the mean of machine one is. So certainly machine two is having higher torque. So if I say torque higher is better, I'll go with machine two. And if we if we talk about variation or or dispersion, this is the spread of machine two. Okay, and this is the spread of machine one. Right. So basically, machine two is also having higher variation compared to machine one. Machine one is having little bit lower variation. So that is another information that you can get from dot plot. But of course, this works well only when you have data point which are less than fifty. If you have too many data points, let's say 100, 500 or thousands of data points, then it will create a mess. You will not be able to interpret anything. So it will look like a histogram in that case. But of course, all the individual values are there. So it will not be easy to interpret. It will create a lot of mess. So in that case, better to use box plot or histogram. When you have less data points, go with dot plot. That is the choice. Okay. So this is about third tool in our tool pack dot plot. Now let's talk about one more individual value plot. Now this is again <coughs> very easy. And this is also recommended when you have sample size which is less than 50. Sample size less than 50. Let's see how to do this as well. And for that, I have another example. Integer value plot. So let me copy this into minute app. So to create individual value plot, you have to again follow the same path, stat, uh, sorry, graph, and here you need to select individual value plot. And let's just first create simple. And my variable 
graph variable is elastic here. I am counting or I am measuring elasticity. So click OK and you will get a graph something like this. <coughs> right. And of course, this is also from low to high. So a kind of graph like a box plot, but it is plotting a dots. It is plotting a dots, individual values. So all of these are individual values. So we have got individual value here as 90, then maybe 78 or 85, 84. And then these are two values, same two values. These are again, same two values. This is same two values. Okay, same with this. Just a second. Huh? <coughs> Okay, so these are all individual values. That is the only difference. And this is also uh, not useful when you have data point which are more than 50. So use this only when you have data point less than 50. Then only you'll be able to get some insights. And basically what we can see is, it is, this is how it is spread. The, the spread is from maybe 34 or 35 to 90, okay, the wide spread. And we have some values which are repeated at maybe at 68, maybe at 50 or 40. So only two, three values are repeated. So there is no as such any trend here or as such any repetition of value at center. So it is like equally distributed, right? And we can also create this for different categorical variables that is also possible. So to do that, you can Again, go to the same menu, graph and individual value plot. And here, go with groups. So my variable is elastic, categorical variable. Let's just say that I want to do it with respect to attitudes. And I click OK. Now you'll get this <coughs> individual value plot with different attitudes. Okay, attitude 0, attitude 1, attitude 2. So three sources, 1, 2, 3. And now we can compare that which one is having lower elastic value, which one is having higher elastic value, which one is having lower spread, higher spread. So similar to uh, what we see in a box plot, similar. But what we are seeing here is all the individual values, not the spread, not that 25, 25% differentiation. These are just individual values, but still we can get the same insights that machine two is having lower elasticity, machine one or additive one is good, additive one is having higher elasticity. And if we compare the spread, machine uh, attitude two is good, variation is lower. Okay, so instead of looking at standard deviation values, instead of looking at mean values, if we try to create a graph, it will be easy for any layman to understand about the process. Okay, graph or when I say picture, picture talks a lot, picture talks a million words. So it is always recommended to represent your data using some graphs other than providing the values, right? Values, of course, talks a lot, but you need to think a bit before without or, you know, before interpreting about values. But if you look at the graph, you don't have to give it a, you know, thinking. You can just make an interpretation just like that. You can talk about it in very easily or in fact, in layman language. Okay, so this is one more tool, individual value plot. And in fact, you can do it for one more variable. So if you add that here, let's say I add batch. <coughs> okay, so similar to what we have seen in uh, earlier example of box plot, but here it is little bit tough to interpret. Okay, because we have 10 batches for each of the additive. Now, and, and what we can see is for each of the batch, we just have one, only one value, only one value. So if I really want to go with elastic values, which are higher is better. So I basically have to go with maybe batch number one or not batch, but additive one. This is all with respect to additive one. And within that batch one is not batch one. This is one 
and this is two. So batch two is good. Okay, within additive one, batch two is good. If elasticity higher is better. If it is lower is better, then basically entire batch or entire additive two. And within these additives, maybe I can go with batch four or maybe batch nine. Right, or maybe close to batch one. So I can choose between any of these three, which are very close or similar to each other. So this is how we get useful insights using individual value plot as well. <coughs> okay. So so now just just let me know, guys. Is it are we good with this? Is it is it are you finding it helpful, useful? Are you getting bored? <laughs> just, just let me know. Then I'll just take a sip of water. <clears throat> yes. Are we good? Are you guys able to relate these to uh, your practical sites, your practical problems? Or in fact, you can, what you can do is you can just take and take or get access to your data and try to create these graphs. That will be more useful. So now let's talk about one more tool. This is my personal favorite, scatter diagram. And when we talk about scatter diagram, this is also called as XY graph. XY graph in terms of Excel, Excel call it as an XY graph. And this is again old school age graph, old school age uh, thing that we have learned, but we, at that time we don't know about it. So basically this is X axis and this is Y axis, right? As we all know. And then uh, when we say X and Y, X and Y, what is the meaning of X and Y here? What do you think? What is X and what is Y? Yes. Or, or if I give you example, <clears throat> time. Okay, time and, or, or if I say study time. And marks. So, which one is X and which one is Y? Yes. Type in chat, or just you can just unmute yourself and you can speak. Study time and marks. Which one is X and which one is Y? How do we differentiate that? So, so the differentiation is very simple. Differentiation is very simple. X is called as input and Y is called as output. Output. Now tell me which one is X and which one is Y out of these two. <clears throat> y is marks, perfect. And X is study time. Input is my study time output is my marks right the more is the time that i put on studying higher is the marks so this is basically depending on my x variable so this is also called as dependent variable dependent it depends on some other variable and x this is called as independent independent variable that there are they are not depending on any other factor so X basically input, Y is output. And this is what is created or plotted on scatter diagram, output versus input. Do we have any relationship between X and Y? If you want to assess that, then you can create a uh, this scatter diagram. And very powerful tool, yet very simple, right? There is no rocket science. You can create a scatter diagram uh, by two or three clicks in Excel and <clears throat> you can get that useful information. <coughs> And then there are different degrees of correlation. How strong they are related with each other. It can be none. It can be low. It can be high and perfect. So, so this graph, in in fact, this graph itself talks a lot. Right? None means 
for same values you are getting <clears throat> you know different results or for a different x value let's say this is 10 this is 20 for different x values you are getting same y value let's say 100 so there is no any access relationship you cannot be able to plot or draw a line trend line it can be this way it can be this way it can be this way or this way or there is basically no any pattern but here there is a trend there is a pattern of course the data points are far away from the line and that is why we call it as a low correlation low correlation between x and y here we can draw the line with much more confidence now the data points are not that much away from the line right close to the line and this is called as high and perfect that means all the data points are exactly on the line x and y are having perfect relationship for example if i change x by 10 points y will also change by 10 points if i change x by let's say 100 points y will also change by 100 points that means there is perfect relationship and in reality this never exists unless and until you are manipulating the data this doesn't exist in reality what we can see in reality is somewhere between low to high or also this none if there is no relationship so this is something called a superficial this is not this never exists and then there are different types positive change in one will incur change in another in positive direction positive direction there is also negative negative is also possible in some cases okay change in one will cause decrease in another value curve curved is also possible in some kind of chemical processes where it, it increases up to a certain point and after that it decreases and there are also partials up to certain values we can see the relationship and after that we cannot see that relationship okay so partial is also possible so you can create your own scatter diagram and just by looking at the scatter diagram you will be able to identify whether it is positive or negative whether it is curved whether it is low high or whatever it is okay and now just create this in excel <coughs> okay so for this i have some data with me and of course this is the same data study time and marks and i want to see if there is a relationship between study time and marks if there is a relationship yes or no that is what i want to see that is what my objective is and to create to, to create that scatter diagram in excel you just need to select this data okay and or you can just click anywhere in this table and go to insert and there is a xy scatter diagram Okay, just click on this it is as simple as that okay so based on what we seen uh, on earlier slide tell me do we have a relationship and if yes is it positive or negative positive perfect it is positive is it strong or low or high or is it partial okay if i pay attention to this closely i can see that certain beyond certain value there is no as such any relationship the line i cannot draw that line much more confident okay that means this is a partial in fact in fact look at this this is uh, so this is a time on x axis right and this is a mark so if you are studying for let's say 25 minutes <clears throat> some students are getting maybe 50 mark students are getting maybe 90 or 85 marks okay and they both are studying for the same time 25 minutes that means there is no relationship as such in fact after this point but up to that up to 25 minutes i can see that if you study for five minutes you will get less mark if you study for let's say 20 minutes you will get higher marks 
maybe in the range of this. So the mark will vary from 20 or maybe 10 to possibly 70. But if you really want to go beyond 70, if you want to get more marks above 70, <coughs> then it is not only study time. Of course, few students are getting that mark. Right. But if you look at this 35 minutes, you will still be able to get, you know, 70 marks. Some of them are getting 85 marks or 100 marks. So there is no access relationship. So there are other factors. It is not only study time. There are a few more factors which are basically giving you more marks. So basically uh, the quality of teacher or the material that you are using or your environment, family environment, your IQ, those are the factors that might be giving you a higher mark beyond that particular study time. And this is how we create a scatter plot and this is how we interpret the scatter plot in Excel. Yes, any questions in scatter plot? Anyone has any doubt here? Okay. <clears throat> and there is one more example. So what I'll do is I'll share this data with all of you. Make sure you are the part of that community. Just click on the link and join there. I'll share this data in the community and you can go to Excel and create a scatter plot and just put that graph into community and just put the, put your interpretation. Okay. That way we all learn. <clears throat> so it is a good channel to be there into community. I'll keep on sharing this kind of contents there and you can upgrade yourself continuously. All right. So let's talk about next topic. So there are some considerations before we analyze that scatter diagram. It is something called as correlation and causation. <clears throat> so this is an alert that we need to make sure that, or we need to basically identify that whether it is a correlation or causation. If we are seeing a relationship, that doesn't mean that there is a relationship. It may be because of some other factor, <coughs> right? And, and the example is this. In summer, ice cream sale increases and sunburn rate also increases. So what will happen if I create a scatter diagram on versus uh, ice cream sale versus let's say sunburn rate or let's say ice cream sale <coughs> versus sunburn rate. What will happen? We'll see a graph like this. Yes, positive correlation. But can I make conclusion that if you eat more ice cream, you will get more, more sunburn. Can I make that conclusion? Yes or no? Of course not, right? And why? Why I cannot make that conclusion? <coughs> yes, why I cannot make that conclusion? No evidence or, or it doesn't make any sense. It is not practically possible. It is not practically feasible. How does ice cream sale will cause sunburn rate? How does someone can get sunburn if they eat the ice cream? It is not practically possible. So this is what we call it as a correlation, but it is not a causation. It is not a causation. What is causation is sunburn rate is increases because of summer and ice cream sale is also increases because of summer. So there is third factor. There is third independent factor, which is contributing to this two. And you are plotting correlation for this two, which are outcome of something else. So this is a caution that we must be aware about that try to find out whether it is just a correlation or causation. We need to see both, right? We need to see both in order to control our, or in order to optimize our process. We need to have both in place. <coughs> causation is something that if we hear something, there is an effect or there are, there are fumes in this case. This is the causation. This is what we need to see, not only correlation. And another consideration is we should always consider the entire range of the data, right? It should not be like very much closed or let's say the temperature is varying from 10 to 50 and you are getting data only from range of, let's say 15 to 18 or 15 to maybe 20. 
so you are basically not considering the wide range of data <coughs> so that is one more thing to be taken care of <coughs> try to get or try to consider wide range or the range which is practically using the range that you are practically using try to get that range and that only makes sense okay that data only makes sense you can also uh, differentiate scatter diagram based on different suppliers or or of course different sources without that suppliers or sources in place you will not be able to interpret anything and this is what we call it as a <coughs> stratification 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 means different sources supplier a and b supplier a and b so if we do not have the supplier a and b in place the conclusion will be for this first graph the conclusion will be there is no relationship <coughs> right consider this all as maybe dot or stars that means there is no relationship but the moment we put the suppliers in place we'll be able to see that supplier a and b both are having that positive relationship okay and same story goes here if we have that supplier in place then there is basically no relationship but if we take out the suppliers then there is a relationship right consider this all as a dot black dots then only there is a relationship with independent suppliers there is no relationship right clear is there any doubt in this graph Okay, and there is one more graph, matrix scatter plot, matrix plot uh, scatter plot is also <clears throat> very useful in case if you are having multiple variables in place. Okay, multiple variables. So let me copy the data quickly. So we'll have to use Minita for this purpose. <clears throat> it is not possible in Excel. Okay, so let's say I have three different variables or or three different data points, and I want to see if there is a relationship between these three or not in a single graph. So if that is the outcome, if that is the objective, then you can use matrix plot. So go to go to graph and matrix plot. By the way, this is where the scatter plot is in in minute app and you will get the same graph let's go with matrix plot and go with simple <coughs> here you can select <coughs> all the graph variable strength pressure and concentration and in matrix option let's just click on lower left full will be a little bit difficult to interpret lower left is what is recommended so click on lower left and click ok you will get the graph so this is nothing but a scatter diagram but multiple scatter diagram in a single graph right and this is how it is read so this first graph talks about pressure and strength right so we can see that there is some kind of relationship not high very low but yes there is a relationship this graph talks about strength so this is the strength and concentration this is the concentration so strength versus concentration and we can see that there is a relationship right strength and concentration and there is a positive relationship and this this third graph talks about concentration so concentration on y and pressure on x axis and we can see that there is no access relationship here and you can add multiple variables here you can add 10 20 i don't know what is the maximum range of minute app here but you can add i i tried it up to up to 15 variables and that works for me okay so what will happen let's say i add all of them
टॉर्क हार्डनेस इलास्टिक स्ट्रेंथ प्रेशर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ओके कॉलम साइज इज नॉट सेम सो विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू दैट बट यू कैन एड ऑन नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स यू कैन एड नंबर ऑफ वेरिएबल्स यू जस्ट नीड टू इंश्योर दैट ऑल आर हैविंग सेम नंबर ऑफ डेटा पॉइंट्स ओके ऑल आर हैविंग सेम नंबर ऑफ डेटा पॉइंट्स अदरवाइज मिनट आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू ड्रॉ दैट रिलेशनशिप एंड दिस इज हाउ यू क्रिएट मैट्रिक्स स्कैटर प्लॉट इन मिनट ऐप ओके वेरी यूजफुल इन केस इफ यू आर हैविंग मल्टीपल वेरिएबल्स and now let's talk about next graph that is probability plot <coughs> okay now this is very useful graph probability plot and this the the main purpose of this probability plot is to find out if your distribution is normal or not that is the main intent that is the main objective do we have normal distribution yes or not you can identify by creating this probability plot and it it creates the probability plot on two axes one is your <clears throat> x axis which is your data values and the another axis y axis is your percentile or percentage it ranges from 1 to 100% and it is not linear the scale is not linear the scale is basically transform scale y axis is transform so that this line looks like a straight right if you look at this this is 5 okay and this is also 5 5 to 10 so it is not linear it is transformed using some transformation just to make this just to make sure that this line looks straight but anyways if you really want to find out if your data is normal or not you just have to create this probability plot and based on this line based on this graph and based on this p values we will take a decision so let's do it quickly in minute app and then we'll interpret the results <clears throat> okay so let me first copy the data for this so i have two data here one is diameter of some component and another is tile warping <clears throat> okay tile warping i hope you able to recognize that tiles that we put into our houses is it flat is it flat or is it having this kind of surface that is what the tile warping is okay so basically they are measuring the flatness how flat the tile is and let's create normal probability plot or probability plot for these two values and let's see do we have normal data or not so go to graph and here click on probability plot select single and here we need to select the variable diameter and let's select tile warping also and in distribution you can select the distribution which one is you want to test whether it is normal or log normal or gamma or wave bull there are multiple distributions so we basically do this to find out whether it is normal or not and in data display make sure that this confidence interval is also selected click okay one more time and you will get a, so you will basically get two graphs one is for diameter and the second is for tile warping so let's just first talk about diameter okay and what we need to see here is the points are close to the line and the p value <clears throat> okay and and we'll not talk about what is mean by p value here i'll just tell you how to interpret whether it is normal or not and to interpret that we need to compare p value with a standard value of 0.05 okay this what is mean by this 0.05 maybe we'll take another session for that uh, on hypothesis testing and we'll talk about this in detail okay but this is what we usually assume 0.05 and we have to see if we have p value more than 0.05 or less than 0.05 so if p value is more than 0.05 p is high in that case we make a conclusion that 
data is not normal or or we can say that data is normal not not normal we we make a conclusion that data is normal and when p value is less than 0.05 then we make a conclusion that data is not normal okay so now look at the p value and tell me do we have normal distribution or not yes yes we have a normal distribution because p value is more than 0.05 and we can also interpret that by using this graph so this center line is what we need to look into all the data points has to be close to the center line and this line this another two lines are basically confidence intervals this is upper confidence interval and this one is lower confidence interval confidence interval for this line the center line not for individual data points so this line can vary from here to here line can vary from this side from here to here is what confidence interval is and if you look at the data points all our data points except this are within the confidence interval and following almost a straight line that means our data is normal okay and if you look at the another graph that we have created look at this do we have normal distribution here p value is it less than or greater than yeah data is normal normal p value sorry is... not normal not normal. sorry sir right not normal data is not normal because p value is less than 0.05 and also this data points are not following the line it is following different trend so of course there are multiple data points which are beyond the line beyond the confidence interval and also it is not following a straight line that means it is not normal so you can do it in two different ways either by looking at the graph or by looking at the p value okay so these are two graphs based on this so based on this graph we can make a conclusion that do we have normal distribution or not and this is important from the perspective of selecting a tool for certain tool you need normal data for certain tool you need non normal data so to find out normality of your data is very much important assumption for using any tool and this is how we test for normality using probability plot clear normal probability plot or or probability plot <clears throat> okay so that is all about today's topics we have covered all the tools that we were supposed to cover and i can see there are only four participants <laughs> remaining that is fine for me there is nothing wrong maybe we are delaying on the time commitment the committee time is 12:30 we are delaying it by half hour so maybe i have to find out or maybe i have to cut it down by, by some time right i have to make it close in one and a half hour so now let's talk about career growth i hope you guys are staying here for so long so you might be interested in this so there are three things that are important one is problem solving skill second is knowledge and knowledge versus application and soft skills right so so what do you think why should we learn this skill why should we learn problem solving skill yes second ji you saying something yes uh, it uh, required to be in a professional life there are lot of problems are there and the person who knows the problem solving skill is systematically uh, he will get promoted or uh, noticed something like that 
Hmm. So this skill we know because we don't want to go haphazard way in any industry. Hmm. So if we know all the tools and problem solving method and see our language is also been learned by customer also. Huh. They also require the problem solving skill, how you are going to solve your methodology. So it must and it's also helpful for our personal life also. Perfect. To think your thought processes get increases. So both combination skills are there. So this is required, must. Right. Great. And uh, I hope you all are aware about McKinsey. McKinsey company. So McKinsey company is a global leader when it comes to management consultancy. And they have done a very good research uh, in, in, in last quarter. And according to their research, they, they have done this research to find out which are the skills that are appropriate for next five years. And according to their result, according to their outcome, problem solving skill was one of the skills that we should acquire for being there or for being in the competition for next five years. And that is why it is so important. And that is why people are, you know, if you just do a Google search about this problem solving skill, there are thousands of people who are talking about this skill or who are teaching you these skills, who are eager to learn these skills. That is why it is important. And those who are having this skill are of course at age, of course at a competition age. They have that advantage with them. And of course, we all know this. <clears throat> the more problem you solve, the more money you make. And this is not true for only professional life. This is true for personal life as well. And of course, we should not be money oriented always. But this is reality that we cannot deny. That think about any company who is at top. They are solving the key pain areas for most of the people or for multiple people, thousands of hundreds of lakhs of people. The higher problem you solve, the higher is the success, the higher is the growth. And uh, there are different ways to do this. There are different ways to solve the problem. What I teach is Lean Six Sigma. One of the, one of the most recognized problem solving skill that you must have that, that is there in the industry today or that is there in the market today. Okay, so Lean Six Sigma way is very methodological, very practical in nature, and it is not depending on industry. It is not depending on your process type. You can do it almost for any of the process. You can implement it for any of the process, irrespective of the industry, irrespective of your career background or your educational background. You can learn these skills and you can implement these skills. And the methodology that Lean Six Sigma follows is DMAC methodology. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. Right, so we'll teach you how to define a problem. So it starts from problem definition. And if you remember one of the quotes said by Einstein, the great Einstein, we all know that person. He says that if I have one hour to solve a problem, I'll spend 55 minutes on defining a problem and five minutes in talking about or thinking about solution. 55 minutes thinking about problem itself and five minutes thinking about solution. And this 55 minutes we spend on defining the problem here in DMAC. That is why defining your problem is the most important aspect before even jumping to the solution. In normal life, what we do is we quickly fix the fix the problem. We try to jump to the solution as quick as, as possible. And in long run, that problem will again recur and that keeps on happening. So, so defining problem in correct way is the most important criteria. That is why it starts with defining a problem. So we identify who are our customers, then we identify their problems, then we define it in a correct way that actually makes sense to business and customer both. And then that problem is taken as a project. Then we go to major phase. <clears throat> major phase is where we identify all the X variables, all the input variables. And then we take these input variables, we go to analyze phase. And in analyze phase, we use various tools to find out root cause. So the, the tool that we use, one of the tool is like scatter diagram, XY diagram. Do we have relationship? Is it a root cause? And there are multiple other tools like uh, correlation and regression. There is hypothesis testing. There is viable analysis. There is root cause analysis. There is FMEA. There are multiple tools that we can use in analyze phase to find out root cause. Then we go to improve phase. Once we find out root cause, we go to improve phase and we generate a solution here. Based on the root cause, we generate a solution. We implement the solution. We verify whether the solution is working or not. And once it is implemented and verified, then we go to control phase and here in control phase, the main goal or objective is to sustain the result. 
right so so if you look at it carefully on on a broader perspective it starts from defining a problem finding out correct root cause implementing a solution and not only implementing and getting the results but sustaining the result okay so this is what we call it as a continual improvement we find out a problem we solve it we achieve the improvement we sustain the result again we keep on doing this for new problems so this is what we call it as a continual improvement and the improvement that we do here is breakthrough improvement so the savings of six sigma projects are in terms of crores if not in lakhs in terms of crores huge potential is there for any company who is trying to implement this or any person individual person who is trying to learn this skill there is a huge potential to solve the problems and to get career growth right because the more problem you solve you will get noticed and you will get promoted and <clears throat> that growth will happen and in fact understanding and learning only lean six sigma is not good is not enough okay and i'm saying this a very uh, i'm making this statement very bold because only knowledge is not important what is important is application what is important is application if you have knowledge so what i call i used to call this as a knowledge if you have knowledge that is a power right everyone is not having that knowledge there are only few people who are having that knowledge so those who are not having that knowledge are powerless so if we have the knowledge we have a power but if we know how to use that knowledge if we know how to apply that knowledge then this is what i call it as a super power super power do you want to be powerful or super powerful what is the what is the value of that knowledge if you are not able to apply that what is the value of putting efforts money time and you know getting lot of things done to just to get the certification and if you are not able to apply that what is the value of that skill and that is this is basically a, a quite a big pain area for me yesterday i received a call from a person who was in canada who was studying something uh, i'm not sure if he's there or not let me see <coughs> no he is not there <coughs> and uh, we were talking about this uh, issue of so he was certified he was certified green belt certified green belt but he don't know he was he was blind how to implement this now he has got that certificate from some industry some institute and now he was struggling with the implementation of this skill how to select a problem how to solve the problem and how to get you know that benefit and how to even get a career growth so the person from whom he learned this skill was certificate oriented and in fact the person who got this certificate is also certificate oriented he got this certificate just to get the benefit but it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way knowledge is not enough knowledge is not sufficient what is important is the application so you need to find out application side you need to find out practical side and for that purpose when you learn the skill you need to learn it from someone who is able to teach you that how to implement it practically and over the course of my 12 years of experience i have done more than 50 plus projects including green belt and black belt and i know the practical side it it is not like 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 in in real life it is not like 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 you have to think outside of the box you have to uh, mold some rules you have to think from different perspective to find out what is the correct root cause it doesn't always work on a statistical basis you have to find out practical aspect of each and every problem and that is what i in i basically emphasize when i uh, you know deliver this content it is not only statistical tools it is not only techniques it is not only certification it is the practical side that we must be aware about <clears throat> and and the reason why i am putting this superman here hanuman right we all know there is a reason for this image anyone anyone guess this why there is a hanuman here any any wild guess okay remember the story of hanuman when he wake up when he was a child kid he wake up one day and he want to eat sun yes he he fly from uh, from his home and he really, he literally wanted to eat sun he says that it is a quite a good fruit i want to eat that remember that story he almost was close to sun and as the size of the sun gets bigger his size also gets bigger and he was almost about to eat the sun 
and then something weird happened someone came in picture and he says that you will not be able to do this and uh, then he just uh, give him a kind of you know kya bolte yaar usko english mein i don't know we call it in marathi we call it shap bad words he gives him something or basically that person took out the power from him he was having a power to fly he was having power to increase his size so he has having that power but the moment he tries to do that he forgot all his powers he forgot his capabilities he forgot that what he has he forgot all his knowledge and <clears throat> what will happen is in real in real life we used to forget our knowledge if we do not do the applications right he was applying his skill <laughs> to eat the sun which was not good for all the future uh, or which was not good for anyone so he forgot his knowledge but in real life what we do is we even in fact we never try to eat that sun we never try to apply what we have we never try to apply our skills or knowledge and that basically end up in losing that skill losing that power or losing that knowledge we forget what we have uh, over a longer period of time and then we stuck into that same place for a life that will never help us in getting growth so application is what i strongly believe in knowledge is half part application is the full part superpower and how you do it there are two options one is uh, keep on attending this uh, sunday sessions uh, i'll keep on updating the topics new topics are coming there a lot of statistical tools lot of practical tools in fact a lot of tools to help you identify the problems so i keep on doing these sessions for each and every sunday for a life as long as it is possible for me i'll keep on doing this so you can join these sessions you can do self self study go to trial and errors you have to implement the knowledge see if it works do some practice and keep on doing it this is option 1 option 2 is if you want to fast track this if you want to accelerate this journey join my upcoming six sigma mastery program wherein i will teach you how to learn this entire dmac methodology uh, not only six sigma but lean so i'll teach you both lean and six sigma and the approach is going to be 100% practical it is not theoretical and in fact i'll provide you 100% guidance on project execution as well so i force you to take a project in your company in fact will i'll help you talk with your management talk with your boss and allow you to take a project will will try to justify them that why it is important how do we take a project why it is important from business perspective and we'll try to get a project for your own sake in your own company and we'll work on that project as we proceed through this program and we'll execute that project from define to control phase as we learn this skill so that will give hands on practical experience 100% hands on practical experience that how it works on your real life on your real problem that is something that is different and this is of course not easier it is also a, a tough way to do but faster way right just just accelerated way and uh, when it is starting it is starting from 14th august uh, the program that i am starting is black belt complete black belt course which is advanced uh, it is starting from 14th august every saturday and sunday 2 pm to 6:30 pm and there are 12 sessions 4.5 hours each so there are there is total 54 hours of live training so the training that we have now is going to be there for 54 hours covering all the topics from six sigma along with that we are also having weekly q and a sessions maybe one hour per week wherein we talk about question and answers that are from exam perspectives and these questions are the questions which are asked in asq exam asq is considered as global leader in six sigma industry or when it comes to six sigma asq is what is comes in everyone's mind so i'll try to i'll help you prepare for asq exam by conducting these q and a sessions there is also 10 hours of project guidance so we'll basically discuss two three projects that i done in my curriculum or, or that i done as as a part of my consultancy i'll take you through that project and i'll help you understand how it is done how i am doing it so basically i preach what i teach i love to teach what i uh, do what i am doing and we'll go through this project i'll tell you how i am doing my projects that will give you more more, more useful insights of course i am having uh, or you are having my support in mentoring and hand holding in case of execution of the projects and along with that many more exciting bonuses the number one bonus is linkedin mastery program so i'm sure most of you are and now there are only four people in the list but i'm sure few of you are here who know me from linkedin right yes if you know me from linkedin just type in yes let me see
Okay, if not, maybe from some friends, some reference, or maybe from some email list. But now in today's era, uh, if we if we talk about social networking, Facebook has dead. Facebook is a dead platform. It is dead for those who are just going on Facebook for doing time pass. It is a it is now a business place. Facebook is a business place. If you go and do a random search, uh, just scroll on Facebook, you will see that there are tons of advertisements. In fact, after every four four post, there is a post which is advertisement. Just there is something called a sponsored is written down on the post, which is even showed showed to you to make you purchase, to make you something buy, to make you something or to to sell something to you. So Facebook is a marketplace. It is not a social network anymore. And the business is where uh, so the LinkedIn is where business is. There are there are CEOs, there are managers, there are uh, you know there are plant heads, there are leaders, there are all sort of peoples on LinkedIn. And today LinkedIn has almost having seven billions of peoples on LinkedIn active users, and those all users are from different sectors, different backgrounds, different industries, different companies. So if you just go on LinkedIn and uh, do a quick search, you'll find that there are all sort of peoples. And if you really want to grow, if you want to let's say you want to go and work in a Google. So just follow Sundar Pichai on LinkedIn. Follow Google on LinkedIn. Follow Google employees. Try to make post about Google. Try to make post about your skills, your knowledge, and you will get noticed. People will follow you. They will like your share. They will like your post. They will share your post, and that way you will get noticed. That way you will get highlighted. And LinkedIn, when it comes comes to this LinkedIn Mastery program, this is the free class that I'm providing. You can literally take advantage of this LinkedIn Mastery to to you know to increase your personal branding and to get the growth and to get the job that you really want to get the second bonus is uh, skillshare classes skillshare is one of the best website today when it comes to soft skill development there are classes like leadership skill communication skill and there are a lot more and i'll give you 6 months of free access as a as a part of this program and within that 6 months you can learn multiple skills multiple skills that are open to all who who basically participate in this program along with that there is also a time management course that i am going to provide you for a lifetime which is provided by one of the best mentor of mine so i'll just give you access to that time management course which is vital element of of course career growth so you can learn how to manage your time better so if you are interested in getting that uh, there is a special bonus okay if you are just interested in getting that just get in touch with me just let me know if you are uh, willing to go for upcoming batch and we'll be happy to discuss any questions that you are have okay you can just write down my contact details and we'll discuss it further yes any questions sachin ji swar ji virendra ji no no great so let's stop for today here then if there are no questions and what i'll do is i'll send you the notes through email and i'll also send you this brochure and all those details so if you are looking for uh, you know going for this full term full time this all this training and if you really want to uh, get in depth of this then just let me know okay i'll be happy to assist you all right yes great then see you then in the next session next sunday all right bye then